What is going on, everyone? Hope you're having a good weekend so far. Um, I just wanted to jump on and say I really appreciate. I've seen that recently uh, the channel subscriber count has been growing, so there's probably a lot of new people, and um, really appreciate the subscriptions. And um, I I started the Quantum Bull specifically to add value to the conversation of quantum computing. That's my main mission and goal. Um, I also like to talk about other stocks sometimes, and um, I hope you enjoy it here. Um, anyway, I've got a lot planned for us, and I want to. Uh, I respect your time, and I want to get us in and out super quickly. So we have what's coming up here in just a few days, in a few short days, on Thursday, March 20th. We have a massive heavyweight panel of big quantum computer companies from around the world and around the US coming together in one panel at NVIDIA GTC. So what I've done is I've gone and looked up each of these companies. I'm gonna pull up their website. We're just gonna do a quick who's who run through. Um, we're gonna talk about the panel itself, maybe make some predictions or how all these pieces are starting to fit together. I'm personally super excited for this panel and what's gonna come out of it at NVIDIA GTC. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So this panel is no joke. There's heavyweights and companies from around the country, around the world that are here to talk about quantum computing, where we are and where we're headed. So we're gonna go one by one through this list. NVIDIA is one of the most valuable companies in the world and they're putting on this conference. And Jensen Huang, NVIDIA is putting on this big AI conference and they also have this big focus on quantum computing as well. We also know that not too long ago on January 8th of 2025, so we're talking about nine weeks ago, Jensen Huang came out and said in an interview that quantum computing is 15 to 30 years away. And quantum stocks crashed after those comments. And since then, some of them have recovered. We saw D-Wave this week actually get back to its pre-crash price. So it'll be a very interesting to see. So that dynamic alone, right, of Jensen going in with all these quantum computer companies, which just two short months ago, Wharf, many of them were financially, they were hit pretty hard. Like some of these companies went down 60% on his comments. So for them to all be at the same table on the same panel, I mean, that's some juicy Game of Thrones drama stuff going on. But you love to see it. You love to see the leadership from NVIDIA. If you want to keep your advantage in any space, especially, especially as a tech company, you better know where tech is going. And I think it's a great, great sign that NVIDIA has uh, created this panel in this space for quantum computing. So next on our list is D-Wave. And if you follow this channel, you've seen lots of coverage. If you're new to this channel, definitely go and watch my recent videos about D-Wave because this company has come out swinging with their earnings, with some recent releases in their the journal Science. They're making waves in the quantum computer industry. And I wanted to talk about their CEO because their CEO is no stranger to making waves. So if you all haven't seen this before, let's just take a quick look at this. So Alan Bratz, has over 25 years of experience in product development and bringing new products to market at leading technology companies. As the first president of JavaSoft at Sun Microsystems, Alan oversaw the growth and adoption of the Java platform from its infancy to a robust platform supporting mission-critical applications in nearly 80% of Fortune 1000 companies. He's had positions at other tech companies. But does this sound familiar? JavaSoft, Java, 
oh, oh, why would you need Java? We have an internet browser. Why, why, do you need th- why do you need this? A CEO with D-Wave that is a pioneer of new technologies and what a perfect fit for D-Wave to move their mission forward. So super exciting. And also Dr. Baratz was the first person to come out on CNBC the next day and say, wait a minute, Jensen, you're wrong. You may know a lot about graphics cards and and AI chips and all the things that you make, but quantum computing is my business. And hey, you know, we're we're in commercial today. We're um, we have clients that are using quantum computers today. So super interesting story and a little bit of a contrast there for for our first two speakers on the panel. And it's not just Jensen and Al. Look at this list. It's a long, crazy list. So let's talk about Atom Computing. Atom Computing singular focus is to build scalable quantum computing. Our team is developing large scale quantum computers to help companies and researchers achieve unprecedented computational breakthroughs. So I'm also splitting this video up by privately and publicly held companies. Adam does trade on the NASDAQ and Adam at one point was a $17 position and currently is at the $6 point. I don't know much more about Adam besides that. If any of you all invest in Adam or know more, please leave um, some information in the comments. What do you think about their current prices? Do you think that uh, this $5.90 price is fair? If we go back to January during the crash, we can see they fell off quite a bit. And then they held a $10 position and now they've they've really been at $6 for a while. Okay, next on the list, we have SEEQC, the world's first quantum computing system on a chip. So SEEQC is a privately held company. I don't know much about it. On this channel, I will always tell you when I don't know. I'm not gonna mislead you. So if you know more about SEEQC, Please let me know. I'll let let the community know in the comments. All right, we have Microsoft and yep, the same people who made Clippy. Does everyone remember Clippy? We gotta put Clippy up on the screen. The same inventors of Clippy have now created a quantum chip and are claiming that their quantum chip uses a new state of matter. They've been working on it for a very long time and they have approached the problem in a different way than other quantum computer companies. Uh, So this was a major announcement just less than a month ago on February 15th, 2025. So this shows you how fast all of this is moving. We also know that in January, Microsoft announced 2025 is the year to become quantum ready and they built their quantum ready on ramp. They're one of the first to build a quantum ready program. And, and later we saw companies like ion Q and D wave, make it easier for enterprises, businesses, customers to quickly on ramp into their services. So Microsoft was a leader in both the optics of quantum computing, but also building their own chip with a novel approach. So we're going to see how that plays out. All right. Next on the list, we have Pascal. Pascal is a privately held company. We are the pioneers of neutral atom quantum computing. I don't know much about this company. If you do, leave more in the comments. Inflection, another privately held company. And let's see what their website looks like. Inflection, harnessing the power of quantum to expand human potential commercializing quantum for transformative impact. I don't know much about this company. I do know that they're privately traded. Let me know if you know more about this company in the comments. Next, we have Qera. Qera, neutral atoms are the best approach to achieve large scale fault tolerant quantum computers. Qera is the scientific and commercial leader in neutral atoms. Our publicly Accessible, neutral atom computer, on-premise machines, powerful algorithms, and world-class team can help you make significant progress in your quantum journey. So we know that Psi Quantum 
and Microsoft have worked together. We know that there's a connection to DARPA. And let's take a look at PsyQuantum's website. Building the world's first useful quantum computers. I mean, that sounds like a pretty good mission. All right, we have IonQ, which we've covered in depth on this channel, publicly traded on the NASDAQ. They have their quantum is now language. They're one of the biggest quantum pure plays out there. Let's check their recent news. IonQ expands quantum networking patent portfolio to meet strong market demand for secure communications. So I've mentioned on this channel many times, as soon as quantum becomes more and more prevalent, then data becomes less and less secure. So RSA encryption and security that we've depended on for the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years, they're gonna, we're going to need more security. Then we have the privately held Quantinuum. As the world's largest integrated quantum company, Quantinuum is leading the development of the most powerful quantum computers and the most advanced quantum software solutions. Can we just give some credit where it's due? Quantinuum is a cool ass name. All right, on to Quantum Circuits, which is another privately held company. We invented the first dual rail qubit with built-in error detection and control flow that resets the standard on quantum performance, efficiency, and scalability. Amazon Web Services. So we know that just recently, Amazon announced a new quantum chip. The Ocelot chip uses scalable architecture for reducing error correction by up to 90% and accelerating the development of real world quantum computing applications. So we know that Amazon, Google, and Microsoft in the last three months have announced their quantum computer chips. Rigetti, we have extensively covered Rigetti. Rigetti is another quantum computer pure play, and they are building their business and their hardware in a scalable way. You can transact with Rigetti by buying just the quantum chip, the entire computer and apparatus. You can use their services through the cloud. They have partners like Amazon and Microsoft. Finally, we have Alice and Bob. I've never heard of Alice and Bob. They sound like nice folks. Building the first universal quantum computer. Another private company? Haven't heard of them? Let me know in the comments if you have. So one company that's not on this list is Google. Google, why aren't you here? Are Nvidia and Google beefing? I don't know. Time will tell. But Google Willow was one of the first dominoes to fall and I would have loved to see them on this panel. Um, I don't know if they have any presence. Doesn't look like they have any presence that I can see. So as you can see, a very heavyweight panel of lots of hard hitting private and publicly traded companies. It's gonna be a super interesting conversation. A lot is gonna come out of it. This is an exciting time to be following quantum computers. It's an exciting time to be investing in quantum computers. I am all ears next week. I hope you all enjoyed this content. Went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I wanted to make sure we looked at every company. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.